the introduction for tonight to step beyond the veil is it's a clarion call, a call to action through prayer and fasting to those who have an ear to hear. So tonight we're going to anoint you. You anointed yourself tonight. We're going to anoint you. And I'm going to get radical with that oil saying, so just get ready. Come on. Hallelujah. Saints, this is an opportunity to experience the fullness of Jehovah. Come on. Where the believer's heart is met with the heart of the Father. Where a connection is made to hear God's voice and respond to His will. Putting aside our will so we can respond to God's will. Amen? It's a beckoning. Somebody hear me tonight. It's a beckoning. It's a a summoning. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. In the same way that Moses was drawn to the Mount Oreb, the mountain of God, where this is where he comes face to face. Oh, son. With an angel of the Lord. And there Moses is given instructions on what Jehovah was asking him to do. We're not going to teach you tonight. Do some homework. Go to Exodus chapter 3 and see what took place there. And then by the same manner, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the believer is being summoned into a time of prayer with fasting. Not just prayer, but prayer with fasting to enter through a veil. That gives him access to the most holy place to make intercession with God. Tonight's going to be, tonight God is going to go beyond the veil. Take us beyond the veil. To step through, to enter into the holy place with prayer and fasting. To engage. How many, somebody here want to engage with the Holy Spirit tonight? Man, I can't even stand up. Oh my God. Engage in the intercession, in this intercession with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. We're going to give you an example. If I can have three chairs up here. Uh, pull, pull some chairs up, guys. Three chairs. Hallelujah. I'll help you out. All right. All right. Now, this is where you guys are going to get involved. Brother, I'm going to have you sit right here. Anthony, I'm going to have you sit right here. I didn't, I didn't warn you, but I warned Brother here. All right, so. So this is, this is what we're talking about. And to give you an example here, saints, it, it's, it's so important that we need to know who we are in Christ, where we're positioned in him. Because this place of intercession that took between Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit was a divine order and in the place of the heavenlies. Everything that Jesus did, he positioned himself at the right hand of the Father making intercession. Amen? So God wants to understand as we step, whoo, Beyond the veil, step into this holy place. We're in conjunction with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit will make intercession with us, even in our weaknesses. Amen? For we know not how we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27, watch this. How He who searches the hearts knows what is the mind. Come on. Is the mind of the spirit is because he makes Jesus makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Are you ready? Watch this. You get to be Jesus. You get to be the Holy Spirit. I get just I just get to be Michael. All right. All right. So we're in this place. The Bible says sitting in Christ, at the right hand of the Father. And as intercession begins between Jesus and the Holy Spirit, guys, let's link arms, link arms. This is where we are. We're linked together. Come on, somebody. We're linked together with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And when we don't know how to pray and we begin to use that spiritual language, God will give us the mind of the Spirit to pray the will of God. Come on, somebody. Come on. Hallelujah. All right. Come on. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right. 
So we're going to break this down real quick, and we're going to move it, uh, move according to the, the the word of God here. And you know, ha kada bose, sick. We're getting thumbs up on the on the on the screen here. Sarakos, so I got to do this. I got to do this, brother. Come on, let me pray. Shekoria, extend your hands here. Listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. Listen, the gift of prophecy is in you. Amen. Not everybody is a prophet, but everybody can prophesy. And this is a demonstration in tonight's school of of, of the Holy Spirit here, is that as God would would inspire you to speak, don't hold back. My God, don't hold back. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks about you, what they're going to say about you. They talk about you anyway, so give them something to talk about. Amen. It doesn't matter. God has called you in this position where you will minister his heart into those who are in need. And there's not one person walking on the face of this earth that doesn't need to hear from God. Don't get me going. Jesus. Go ahead. So, brother, when you came in and you sat down and we began to worship, what I was given by the Holy Ghost is the very thing that you asked God to do, and that was to give you the heart of David. To seek the Lord and to be reverent to God and to be fearful unto God. This is too. This is that example. This is that demonstration of power, says God. And in that day that you cried out at me, did I not place your ear upon my chest that you might hear my heartbeat for souls, says the Lord? It is in this that I have declared my word in authority over thy life, captivating your mind, giving you the mind of my son, that with his mind you would expedite a work in meeting the needs of my people. Yes, this mantle of evangelism, I've placed it upon thy shoulder. This office I've called you unto, I've opened up that door. Tonight in this dispensation says, prepare thyself for an impartation of my word with power and with authority. And this is my promise. I will come and I will visit you in the night hours, says God. And there I will give you the dreams and I will give you the visions. And in those dreams and visions, as I was with Daniel, so shall I be with you. I will give you the interpretations. And it will not come out of the mouth of men. It will come from my heart. And you will truly know that it is me, says God. Therefore, prepare thyself in this season of development. For there will come an acceleration by my spirit where I will download divine wisdom, giving you divine knowledge and understanding for the days that are ahead. All I ask for you in this day, says God, do not be silent in the things that I'm asking you to speak. And do not be paralyzed by the enemy in the things I'm asking you to do, says the spirit of the living God. A portion. Come on, come up here with Dad. Yeah, come on, stand next to Dad. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus and by the... Come on, James. Stick. Don't sit there. Go to work. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Father, in the name of Jesus and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Maraka, we pray into this. Dad, we pray into this son, the fulfillment of your word upon their lives, that they never be separated. Never be separated in Jesus' mighty name. And the transferring Maracasa. And, and, and uh, brother, what's your first name? Vincent. Vincent, that's right. Shirko, what is a word of knowledge for you, Vincent. And the same heart that God has towards you as a, as a father to you as a son is the same heart God has given you, Vincent, for your son. And there will never be a separation. There will never be a division, says the spirit of the living God. And even as I hold you close to my heart, keep this one close to your heart all the days of his life, says God. And I will come upon him as I did as I did Daniel, says God. The dreams too will come. The understanding will come, says the Lord. And he will excel in skills with wisdom. And I will cause him to have favor over his peers, says God. And he will be highly, highly reverenced because of the anointing I shall place upon his life. And prepare yourself 
to receive from him in the same manner as, I born, as he becomes, uh, he experiences my spirit, spirit and his spirit becomes alive unto me, says the Lord. And he will come. And the, the application and the confirmation of this is he will come and he will begin to prophesy Hallelujah. by my spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Says the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. And brother, the Lord's telling me to tell you right now, God, the devil's a liar. God's telling me to tell you, you've not failed God. The devil's a liar. You've not failed as a husband. You've not failed in spite of what the enemy has intended. You've not failed as a husband. And you've not failed as a father. This is my heart unto you this day. And I've come to reinforce. Reinforce the stakes of thy household, says God. For even as you are deliberate unto me, so will I be deliberate unto you. And because you have honored me before my people, so shall I honor you before my people, says the Spirit of the living God. And all of God's people say, amen, amen, amen and amen. Saints, you just got to do what God tells you to do, all right? Even in the midst of a message, hallelujah. All right, so we're going to break this down real quick. We're going to take you through some categories of what the veil represents. Because once you understand what it represents, then you can enter into that holy place. All right, you can go beyond the veil and receive what God has for you. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. Woo! Here's a question God gave me today, and I had to answer him. He says, Michael... Do you live behind the veil of intercessory prayer? And I thought, well, I I believe I do. So what the Word of God explains to us us tonight is by going behind the veil, it is not a one-time event or experience. Come on, I need some response here. Don't get all religious on me. Going behind the veil is not a one-time event or experience, saints. It is a lifestyle designed and, and designated and appointed to the believer. A lifestyle of intercession that includes prayer and fasting. It replicates or it copies and reproduces the lifestyle of Jesus. I'm looking up, and my wife is taking notes. That's a good sign. When you're preaching and your wife is taking notes, that's a good thing, man. (laughs) All right. Sorry. All right. This is true discipleship. Come on. Let me go back to that paragraph. A lifestyle of intercession that includes prayer and fasting. It replicates, it copies, and reproduces the lifestyle of Jesus. This is true discipleship, saints. As a believer enters this lifestyle of intercessory prayer, they are to live in that place continually. Come on. Beloved, intercession, prayer along with fasting, enables the believer to gain access in the spirit realm where divine revelation is given and a believer is provided the knowledge of God with understanding To witness the functions of the Holy Spirit with the assistance of angels. Come on, somebody. Let's get get crazy here tonight. Along with the assistance of angels with the saints of God in the earth. Come on. In the earth. That was a good place to say amen. In the earth to demonstrate the supernatural power of God. A believer cannot, a believer must not minimize the true meaning of living behind the veil as one who is called to make intercession with God and the Holy Spirit. We just gave you a demonstration. It is a high call. It is a high call from the Father of creation, saints. Not to be taken lightly or without reverence from the one who offers it. God has offered us his very best. 
God has offered every believer. Actually, he's offered humanity. Come on. He's offered humanity his very best by sending his only begotten son. Walking through the veil, it positions the believer to pray whereas a believer is seated. Come on. In Jesus at the right hand of the Father of glory, where he and Holy Spirit is interceding day and night, night and day, on behalf of every son and daughter of God. Tonight's a school of intercession. Tonight, I'm sorry, tonight's a school of discipleship, all right? On the screen, please, Romans chapter 8, 24. If you want to open up your Bibles, you can. Use your mobile devices, you can. Or you can just focus your eyes on this incredible screen. Romans 8, 24. Who is he who condemns? It is, now watch this, positioned wise. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen. Come on, resurrection power. I said resurrection power. That's behind the veil too. I said it's behind the veil. Resurrection, oh God, hallelujah, is behind the veil. It is Christ who died and furthermore who is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for who? For who? For us. Long before, say, oh, this is, Long before, okay, pray for Brother Michael. I'm getting excited already. Calm down. Since when when we're doing these messages and God downloads something at home, you know, he just speaks to you. Here's the word. Long before others began praying for your salvation. Come on, watch this. Jesus is already interceding. Praying for your name. To be written in the Lamb's book of life. There's a great place to shout hallelujah. Woo! Karabaka. Those of you at home, I pray you're getting blessed. Romans 8, 26. How you like that? Is that a... No. All right. Praise the Lord. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. We read this earlier. For we do not know what we should pray for as we are to pray, but the Spirit himself, my God, somebody, the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. We've got a prophetic word we're going to be releasing tonight. And in that prophetic word, God's going to come upon you in the seven-day ablaze fast, uh, fast, prayer and fasting. And the anointing of God is going to come upon you. And you're going to begin to pray as you pray and as you fast. Groanings. Minister Charlotte. Groanings. Shakatara. Groanings. Shaka from within the inner man is going to come out. Jesus. Jesus. Saints. Of the yellow hymn. Saints of the most high God. This is where true intercession is experienced. Every believer in Christ is given access to go beyond the veil and enter into the holy place. For what purpose? To speak to God. To hear his voice clearly. And to see what God desires to reveal to them. Since we read the Gospels, the four Gospels, and as we read the four Gospels there, we realize that Jesus offers that example and explains what happens when a believer enters in. John 5, 19. Come on, that was supposed to be a suddenly. John 5, 19. All right, hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. There you go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This is what the Word of God says, saints. Most assured, Jesus speaking to his disciples, speaking to us today. Most assuredly, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. 
So let's stop right there. Understand that the things that God asks us to do, to speak his word, to lay hands, to prophesy, to speak a word of knowledge, to expect uh, God to raise from somebody from the dead, it has nothing to do with ourselves. It's all about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Watch this. Doing nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than this that you may marvel. And so we see in the scripture the intimacy between Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. And it's God's, it's the Father's desire, Pastor Fred, that we know what he knows. That he would reveal to us kingdom glory, kingdom living, and how to live kingdom life on this earth. That's his desire for us. His desire for us is to be the vessels that he's asked us to be, to speak and to build his kingdom. Come on, to help build his kingdom in the earth and to fortify his kingdom people through the word. So we, we go to that portion of Scripture where Paul and Silas are incarcerated. They're shackled to a stone wall. Now, get, get your mind in this place. Let's ask the Holy Spirit to take us back to the cords of time and vision. And imagine being in a tomb or in a cave, a, a hole uh, carved out of a, a, a rock. And then there's uh, a passageway that is brought in back into the, to the rock there. So the Bible tells us that here, it's not like our modern day uh, jails. So Paul and Silas are in this cave. It's dark. There's no light. They're shackled. They've just been slapped upside the face, beaten and all that kind of stuff. And they've been uh, put into this, this place of being incarcerated. And in the midst of this, God begins to do something miraculously. Now, we're not saying that you have to go through this type of a thing. But God does something miraculous. In the midst of the incarceration and the discomfort in their physical bodies, their spirit man is now alive. And the spirit, watch this, and the spirit man begins to take over the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotion. And begins to incorporate and give inspiration for Paul and Silas to do what? To begin giving praise unto God in the midst of their condition. Amen? And God looks upon Silas and he looks upon Paul there and he says, hey, they got it. So because they're worshiping me and praising me in the midst of their condition, I'm going to move supernaturally. I'm going to move with miraculous power upon their lives. And the Bible says, all of a sudden, the earth starts to shake. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. The foundations of the, of the, 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 the cave is, is moving. Come on. Come on. And the Bible says that the, I, gotta, I want to follow this correctly. The keeper of the prison is woken up and realizes uh, everyone's chains were loosed, uh, supposing that everybody was gone. So he freaks out. He says, I'm going to take my own life because I don't have to go through the torture that would take place because I, I didn't do what I was commanded to do. Paul gets a word of knowledge. Come on. In the midst of the praise and worship, Paul gets a word of knowledge that the, the jailer is going to take a knife and kill himself. And so what does Paul say? He says, hey, hold up. Don't do that. Hallelujah. Don't do yourself no harm. We're all here. The Bible says that the, the jailer went and got a, a torch and ran in and saw Paul and Silas and the chains were taken off. The Bible says in verse 29, it says, And then he called for a light, ran in, and fell down trembling for Paul and Silas. Now, we're, God's setting us up tonight. I said, he's setting you up tonight. Setting me up tonight. Watch what happened. Then he called for a light, ran for a light, ran in and fell down, trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out and said, Sirs, the jailer bows his heart and reverences Paul and Silas and calls them sirs. What? Here's the question. Oh, Jesus. 
what must I do to be saved? And so they said, Paul and Silas says, believe. Somebody say believe. Believe Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all who were in his house. Saints, here's the key. I said, I walk around with a a keychain on my my hip here, a spiritual keychain. And every time God gives me a key, I add it to that keychain. Here's a key for you, all right? This is where you, as a believer, step through the veil. Enter in and begin interceding on behalf of your household. Come on, don't make me come out there. To bind the assignments of unbelief in their minds. Oh, somebody teach me. That they too will believe for their own salvation. What's holding that? What held us back from receiving our salvation? In our minds, doubt and unbelief. But somebody was praying for us. If it wasn't a family member, according to the word of God, certainly Jesus and the Holy Spirit was making intercession for us so that we would become to believe his word and receive eternal salvation. Amen? Amen. All right. Let's go back to the veil. Kind of went off on a rabbit trail there. All right, praise the Lord. So I, and I love this, saints. I love this. The veil of God symbolizes the entrance into the presence of God. His humanity, the Father's human nature in Christ, the death of Jesus on the cross, God's own obedience, his compliance to authority. Are we good? Jesus' blood power for atonement for the payment of sin. I know that's a lot. You can revisit it. So tonight I'm going to ask you, To open your spirit man big. Come on. Open it wide. In a sense, let's just go prophetic. Let God rent that veil in you right now. Come on. Saints, this is where the ministry of the Holy Spirit here at Genesis is offering you God's school of discipleship. When interpreting the veil, you must bear this in mind that The veil, excuse me, what the veil encompasses. So what is the, uh, encompasses so many things. I want to talk about here a little bit about uh, when uh, when a veil is lifted. Let me, let me get my, gather my thoughts here. Jesus, hallelujah. What does the Bible say about lifting or or taking off the veil? Because the Bible tells us that. At times, the veil is lifted, allowing the believer believer to see the unseen. Now, watch this. Uh, In 2 Kings 6.20 and Luke 24.31. In those two scriptures, there were were eight different uh, scriptures. I'm giving you only two. Do your homework and and, and see what's talking about where the, the veil is lifted. And in these, both these categories, it talks about the veil being lifted off our eyes. Where the spiritual cataracts have kept us blind or we can't see clearly. Amen? That veil has been lifted in Jesus' mighty name. At the birth and the baptism of our Lord, the veil concealing, concealing the glory of our Lord was lifted. And the heavens opened, revealing the angelic host. You can reference that in Luke 2, 14 and Matthew 3, 17. We can keep you here all night and teaching on that, but that's not what we're here for. So the question would be, what does the Bible say about what takes place behind the veil and what it offers the believer. Behind the veil, the believer will find peace, comfort, joy, protection over the mind. Oh, actually, not not the mind, the mind of God. Amen. I don't want to go into all that. Behind the veil, wisdom is given along with revelation, understanding, saints. Behind the veil, increased vision, spiritual vision, clarity of hearing. Behind the veil, things are well seen and well heard without distractions. What is the veil of God symbolic of? Watch this. The veil was symbolic of Christ himself as the only way to the Father. 
In the Amplified Version of John 14, 6, this is what your Bible reads. Again, this may, this, saying, this may not be, uh, uh, let me back up. Jesus said to them, I am the only way. I am the only way to God. And the real truth and the real life, no one, no one comes to the Father but through me. When the back of Jesus, when the flesh was torn, that veil was opened up to where we can enter in. Come on. Jesus, enter into that most holy place. We want to proceed here tonight by taking us back to what God is proceeding in this seven day ablaze. Now, hear us tonight. This may not be for everyone here or those of you that are watching online by live stream, but it is a directive from God for such a season a season of development, a season for growing. And maturing in the spirit of God. It's a season for expansion. Is somebody in the house? It's a season for enlargement. And it's a season for progression, saints. Will all these things happen? Yeah. For some, it will happen instantaneously. Instantaneously. For others, it may come gradually. Nevertheless, they will be shown plainly in your life. The more time spent behind the veil, oh God, here we go. The more time spent behind the veil, the greater the gain of developments. So turn to somebody and say, I got this. Oh, come on, say it like you like I said. Those of you home, give us a comment on us. I got this. This is God's promise to us tonight. <clears throat> I feel the anointing on the top of this head. Woo! The believer can cause an acceleration of these characteristics to manifest as soon as they step through the veil of God through prayer and fasting to intercede. You've heard Brother Michael speak about this before. Uh, uh, in, in other services and when we had our school of intercession when God birthed that we began to develop the school of intercession here we'd be over here on Friday nights and our faces uh, laid out before God and as we began to intercede and prior to that, uh, that night uh, in the mornings uh, we would fast and pray and then when we got here in the sanctuary those nights literally and, and I know this is going to go well, however it goes, I don't care. Hallelujah. The fact that the matter is, in that time of prayer and fasting and intercession, we were here physically. Our body remained, but our spirit, man, the spirit of Brother Michael came out. And God began to escort us through the corridors of time. And we began to see the things that function in the spiritual realm. We saw the activity of the demonic forces. We saw the wars taking place. We saw the, uh, the distinct assignments of Satan uh, afflicting God's people. That's what will happen when you step into the veil, uh, beyond the veil of God. Amen. The miraculous begins to take place. The, 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 the five senses are now triggered by the sixth sense of the Holy Spirit operating in you. And you begin to see Come on, you begin to see out of the natural realm and into the realm of the spirit. Saints, prayer and fasting in this season is such a necessity. We're stepping into the seven-day place, and I, I highly recommend, I strongly suggest that as you pray, and as God would lead you to step into this with us, and you do, you're going to experience something you've never experienced before. Not because I say so. This is God's word, his promise to us. 
I'm, I'm in anticipation. I'm in expectation of experiencing something I've never experienced in the seven, seven day of place. I'm ready to rock and roll, man. I'm ready to step into this. I need to know what God wants me to know. You need to know what God wants you to know. Here's the prophecy. For those of you, set yourself, get your mindset right now. And we're going we're gonna to conclude in this service in about, um, seriously, in about maybe 10, 12 minutes. Here's the heart of the Father to us tonight, saints, in the sanctuary, and to you, uh, those of you that are online. Tonight I offer to you myself in every aspect of development. My purpose is to take you past the point of blessings and into the realm of power where the life of my son will reveal, will be revealed in you and through you. Again, to this clarion call of mine, my desire is to offer you the opportunity to gaze into the realm of the supernatural where the natural, your carnal natural Mind comes into alignment of what is now functioning in the spiritual realm. The purpose of stepping through this veil of mine is to give you access to a life I, I identify to a life I identify in my Christ. That you will speak as He spoke and do as He has done through the sessions of prayer and fasting. It was in those sessions with me that we exchanged the holy things, the combination of actions and words that needed to be understood that would set the captive, captives free. Step into this opportunity of mind. As you do, you will break through into the realms of the spirit and experience a clarity of sight and a clarity of thought patterns in the life of my son as he walked on this earth. Tonight, I, the great I am, raise the bar, the restrictions of the enemy that has prevented you from advancing in prayer with intercession. This will be the confirmation of this high call of mind towards you. During your sessions of fasting and prayer, I will release an unction of the Holy Spirit from within you. Your inner man and my anointing will produce a labor of travail that will escort you through the veil and you will see me face to face. During this, the facade, the illusions, the deceptions of lies the enemy has put in front of you, you will advance in my kingdom and will be, you will advance in my kingdom and those lies of the enemy will be exposed. Then, there, use the authority I have given you to destroy his works and expose him for the liar that he is. As you come out of this fast, you will esteem the value from the results causing you to walk in the confidence that is found in the life of my son, says the Spirit of the living God. If you receive that word, let's give a shout unto, the, unto God. Come on.